when people are liking and commenting on your stuff, are you, are you connecting with them? Are you having a conversation with them? Do not be antisocial on social media. I would love for you to introduce yourself, kind of tell us your story, you know, how you got to be where you're at now. Like growing up, I, I was, I was incredibly um, shy and anxious and, and, and insecure because I just, I, I just, for whatever reason, I just always needed like external validation, which I don't know, shout out to the, to the people pleasers in the audience or the recovering people pleasers. That was me. So I was always really serious because I was always trying to be somebody different for somebody else. And so then in my teenage years, like I think a lot of kids, I found alcohol, which gave me the courage to be who I didn't believe I could be when I was sober. And of course, you know, one night somebody offered me, me drugs and, and I went and, and I ended up getting addicted to drugs through like 18 through to like 22 because same deal. It was something that gave me like permission to just be me, at least for that period of time. And it made me feel amazing. Because when, when you're living in your true nature and you're just being you, it's awesome. But I still didn't believe I could do that, you know, when I was sober. And that, that took me down a, you know, a pretty dark path. Obviously, you can imagine, it, like, I got mixed up with some pretty shitty people. Um, I, I crashed and, and totaled two vehicles, one of which my, my uncle was kind enough to give me. Like, I, I, I remember making up an excuse. I told my parents, believe it or not, that I swerved to miss a kangaroo and I ran into a tree. <laughs> And my dad still goes, you think I didn't know you were lying? <laughs> but <laughs> the truth was it was 3 a.m. and I'd been drinking and I'd, I got in the car and, and I hit a tree. So it was a pretty, pretty wild time. But the cool thing is all of that was the best thing that ever happened to me because my dad gave me a personal development book and it got me hooked into knowing that there was something possible than just what I was experiencing. I just wanted to feel good within myself. I just wanted to feel confident. Like at the core, I just wanted to be able to fit in and just be me. Like that was it. So I just invested uh, like over the last five, seven years, like I've, I've probably invested over $150,000 into personal and professional development to solve that problem. Like three, three four years ago, I, I had an opportunity to invest into a course that would teach me to create and grow a six-figure coaching business. And prior to that, like I'd, I'd failed two network marketing businesses. Uh, I tried so many different things. And I, I, I'm no, I was known to my wife as the like, hey, is, is that another one of those things? Like, what, is that just another one of those things? Because I jumped from things, you know, from one thing to the, to the next. Brooke, you've probably been through that. Everyone that's listening has probably been through, through that. Because I was doing all of that because I thought that if I could be successful, then I'd feel better about myself which is a very much a cliche, but it's true, right? And oftentimes we don't even realize we're doing that. But anyway, long story short, I had an opportunity to invest $18,000 to, to create a coaching business. And I wasn't a coach. I, I was a personal trainer and nutrition coach, but I'd never done anything like that full time. I didn't even have an ABN. Now, for those of you in the US, that's like the equivalent of what you need, the, the number that you need set up to have a business, right? But I had 10 years, 10 years of telling myself that, I could do something great, that I could create success, that I could, that I could do something more. But I had 10 years of saying I was going to do it and never actually following through on my word. So long story short, I was at that point where I was on a sales call with this guy who's like going to enroll me and I'm like, I know I need to do this and I'm scared as hell. But I had gotten to that point where enough was enough, right? And it was like it was no, no other option. Because I had like less than $500 in my bank account. I couldn't afford it. I wasn't a coach. I didn't know how I was going to do it. But I just wasn't prepared to accept not doing it because I'd not done it for so long. And so <laughs> I, I still remember I got on the phone and I rang my mom. I begged her for the deposit and my certainty, right? Because I knew I had to do this. Like she, she supported me. And then I financed the, the rest and, and I didn't know how I was going to pay it back. I didn't know how I was going to do it. And, and I did it. And in the next 12 months, I, I created a six-figure coaching business. I started out in health and fitness. And then o over time, I, I transitioned into helping network marketers, affiliate marketers, and other coaches grow their business because I had some really good success in the social media world doing that. 
But the reason I share that is because there's two pieces of gold. One is that investment forced me to transition from I want to be successful to I have to. So because I've tried so many things, do you think my wife sitting there, I invested this much money, you think she was going to let me give up? <laughs> and when I had to like do cold calls, when I had to like, I'm at, like in, in terms of authenticity, so many times in that year I would do a Facebook Live and then I would stop it and I'd be like technical difficulties like because I was so anxious and insecure and I freaked out and I'd stop it. But it wasn't an option to give up. So and I always the question I always ask to my clients or anyone for that matter, anybody listening, is it possible to fail if you do not give up? And we know in network marketing, right, I think the low barrier to entry to get into the business is oftentimes your biggest blessing but your biggest curse because it doesn't really force you to go all in. You can still dabble, right? And if you're a dabbler on the call, that's okay, but that's not going to get you to where you want to go. So find out what can you do, what can you create, what can you set up to force yourself to commit where you literally block everything else out, yeah? All the other shiny objects, everything else, are you prepared to block everything else out and go all in in your business? Because if you do, you'll just find a way. It's going to be hard either way though. Do you want to have the pain of fail failure because you didn't try or the incredible fulfillment of the success you created because you went through that hard shit to be able to get there? And I hope you're like listening to this right now, getting motivated and getting fired up. But again, do something different. Who can you reach out to? What can you do differently? Yeah, I, I, there's nothing worse than somebody says, you know, five steps to success is just going to happen. No, it's probably going to be really hard. Yeah, you can help get somebody to help you to collapse time and make it easy, but it's still going to be hard. There's going to be, you know, new levels, new devils. As we grow through what we go through, there's always going to be challenges. Anyway, that's one. I'm going on a bit of a rant. No, number two is that you need to get a proven process. And the wonderful thing in, in network marketing is you have a great vehicle to be able to get your customers and your consultants, business builders a result. You've got, you've got the vehicle, but sometimes like you need to follow a proven process. And what I mean by that is find something or someone that's where you want to be. And I don't care if this is in a book or a free mentor or an upline that's where you want to be, or a coach that you pay for, find a proven process. Because really in business, I think you'd agree, Brooke, that as, a, as an employee, like you have the security of just do this and do that, it's going to work. As an entrepreneur, it is your responsibility to figure out that if I'm, what I'm doing isn't working, that's okay. What do I need to seek? What do I need to learn? What do I need to get to be able to get me there? Because we've got two choices. You can either get in your vehicle and drive along and you may hit a pothole, you may get a flat tire, you may go along and then realize you're going the wrong way and have to go back the other way and go back and forth and you may get to your destination or you can find a proven process and take your destination, put it into a GPS, collapse time and reach your goal faster. And nobody has ever done this alone. Ask questions like, harass people, get the answers that you need to get whatever that process is and get that get your stuff plugged into the GPS because then you can get there. Again, though, are you prepared to have the courage to seek and receive the support you need? It's scary. Sometimes we feel like we're a failure just for asking. But And, and, uh, and this question will change your life if you let it. How would things change if you were prepared to actually ask for help when you needed it? Pretty crazy. I would say 90% of the people that I come in contact with are too scared to ask for help. What if that changed? What if you were able to fully commit get the help you need, follow a proven process. Is it possible to fail? The answer is no. I know you agree, Brooke, and everybody else listening. This is simple, but are you, do you get it? Are you prepared to take a different action tomorrow, put your money where your mouth is and go and find that proven process, fully commit? And, and instead of saying, I'm going to get, and I saw a post today, most people in their home-based business say that they're going to commit for 90 days instead of committing for 90 months. Because if you're prepared to be in it for the long haul, you'll succeed. Anyway, I, I don't know where I went with that. I hope that was, uh, I hope that was valuable. As I always say, take the gold, throw out the dirt. But that's a little bit of my journey and I hope you take some gold from what I've shared there. Yeah, that's amazing. I love the do it for 90 months. Yeah, that's just hit me. It's, it's so true. It's so yeah. true. Because then if you hit it, your goals and everything sooner, then you're winning, <laughs> you know? 
Exactly. Well, we wanted to jump into talking about social media because I know that is like the whole way that you really have built your business and got the the success that you have. And you have really a formula, you know, talking about what is the formulas, what's the proven process. And you have a process for social media that can really make you lots of money. Yeah, hundred percent. And I was listening to one of your episodes earlier with you talking about arrows out mm-hmm. marketing versus arrows in. So any any of your listeners that have listened to that, this will make sense. What I'm about to what I'll share with you now is in line with that. There is so much information in the network marketing personal development world, right? And we think that we we think that we need more information. But in fact, one of my favorite terms that I'm gonna quote Yaya Bakar, so my business coach. It says we're overweight with infobesity and it's not a matter of needing more. We actually need to know what to block out and what to prioritize to focus on. So what I'd love to do for you guys today is help to simplify what can potentially be complex so you can amplify your results, your income and your impact because it's not that complicated if you can break it down into, into the three C's that I'm going to share with you now. So the three C's look like this. The first C is content. Who has heard that they need to create content before? And then who here thinks, well, that's great. What do I post? What do I share? What do I do? How the hell do I do it, right? So what we teach is the magnetic content matrix. So if you have a pen and paper, I want you to draw a square and then I want you to draw a cross in the middle so you've got four quadrants. Because if you're visual like me, it will help to be able to see this. So if you were to do that with four quadrants, and every, who here knows that we buy from people we know, like, and trust? Like, who here has heard that before? I think everybody has, right? So this, the, the magnetic content matrix is a very unique blend of different kinds of content that gets your audience to know, like, and trust you so they're ready to buy from you. Brooke, would you agree we, we, we hate to be sold to, mm-hmm. but we love to buy? So the new iPhone comes out and you're like, give it to me. Unless you're one of those Samsung people, which I can't even relate, but the new iPhone comes out. (laughs) I know. I'll make an exception just for this call. But you get it, right? You you love to buy because it's in service to you. So the the four quadrants are we've got character content, connection content, credibility, and conversion. But I also want you to realize what I'm going to share will give structure to what is complex, but the like foundational value or principle of this, and I know you'll agree, Brooke, is I want to invite you guys to do something that I had invited to me that changed my life. And that is I want you guys to be unapologetically self-expressed while unconditionally loving yourself. Now, what does that actually mean? That means that when it comes to creating content, it's a lot less about the script. We say, you know, the scripts are the, the training wheels, but it's a lot more about embodying your message. Now, when you go to, and I'll break this down in a minute, but when you go to share and put yourself out, uh, out there online, is it scary? Yes or no? Mm-hmm. Yes. So, and, and you, you, you be vulnerable. You also talk about your business and how you can help people and what you believe in. Is it scary? Let me validate that for you guys. You know, sitting here, oh, it's easy for you, Owen. It's easy for you, Brooke. No. I've done the lives. I've done the thousands of takes of videos. I've done the content. I was putting out content for two years with no one, no one liking or commenting on it. So there's no freaking excuses. I love this because I've, I've been where you guys are and sucked. Suck it up, right? But unapologetically self-expressed means that you're prepared to put yourself out there but to have the compassion and self-love to be accepting of putting yourself out there and, and being allowing people to accept you for you. Because I know if I stand in my truth, the people that know me for me will love me for me. And Brooke, I love you for you. People love you for you. How would things change if you had the courage to put yourself out there even when it was scary and to love yourself enough and to to accept yourself enough to do that regardless of how it was received? Because what you would find is it's incredibly therapeutic and you find that when you're vulnerable, Brooke, what's your natural instinct to go and give to somebody when they're vulnerable and open? Just curious. You just want to give them more and you just want to love them and like just like be right there next to them. Exactly. You want to love on them. So what are, what are we all, whether you're consciously or unconsciously aware of it, want more of? What love and connection. More love. Exactly. So is it possible that by just bearing your all, you would get what you actually want to receive? Mm-hmm. But are you giving people the chance to give that to you? Yeah. And guess what? 
it can't hurt me if you know that, it, that I've stolen, been addicted to gambling, um, drugs, alcohol, crashed my car. If you know about it, it can't hurt me. Yeah, it's the things we hold in that hurt us because what if they find out? What if this person knows? What if they realize that I'm not perfect? Yeah, you got to realize that people have a really good bullshit radar. They know you're not perfect anyway, so you might as well share it. Yeah, true. So character content. This is where you share your beliefs and your worldviews and what you stand for. So I openly say, if you're a dabbler, a whinger, or a complainer, and you're not prepared to take full responsibility and accountability for what you want to create, you can actually unfollow me because I can't help you. And that's not in a bad way because I love you. It's actually in a very loving way, but it's okay to un unfollow me, right? I, I, I share that I love country music, you know? I share that I sometimes wear socks and, and sandals or thongs, like flip-flops. We call them thongs, flip-flops. And it's a little bit weird, right? But, <laughs> but what that does is that's going to attract my tribe and it's going to repel the kind of people that I don't want to do business with and that I don't want to work with. Hey, and I'll also say, hey, have you ever, and just anybody listening right now, have you ever had the time objection or have you ever had the money objection? Great, go and share your belief on it. You know what? If you think you don't have the time, well, guess what? You need to make the time. Yeah? And again, is this scary? Yeah, first time, I, you know, you're calling out somebody that doesn't have the time and somebody comments and they're like, what do you mean? You don't know my situation. I have seven kids, da, 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 da. Yeah, but then they can unfollow you and that's good. <laughs> that's awesome. Go, it's fine. So that's character content. Connection content is where you share your authentic you. Talking about authenticity, right? That's just you. Yeah, and it's your quirkiness. You know, it's your vulnerability, being prepared to say, hey, I had a shitty day today or I'm excited about this or whatever. But it's also your vulnerabilities. And my favorite quote, which again, I'll give Yaya the credit for this. Actually, I don't even know if he said this, but anyway, that's, that's where I heard it, is that our imperfections are what make us human and it's our humanity that makes us influential. So let me say that again. It's our imperfections that make us human and it's our humanity that makes us influential. Like that, that is so powerful, is it not? Mm -hmm. And would we rather follow somebody who is always right, always real? And sometimes like other people say to me, like, why do I want to share my vulnerability? Why does anybody care about that? Yeah. When we share it, vulnerability plus lesson equals value. Vulnerability plus lesson equals value. And what does it create, Brooke? It creates relatability, character and connection. That's your personal brand. That's, that'll stay with you forever. Like you will evolve, your beliefs will evolve, that will always evolve. But that's like your personal brand, which is great. Awesome, yeah? But Brooke, you, you probably know a lot of people that have a great personal brand. They're getting lots of likes and comments and they're still not making any money, yeah? Mm -hmm. So then credibility content is where you share your testimonials, your how-tos, you know, five steps to lose, to lose 15 pounds. Uh, without having to go to the go to the gym, you know, three lessons that I learned will, will help you make money online, and and also and just showing very specifically, very deliberately how you can solve your potential prospects problem and help them reach the pro the promised land. Because the best thing, the way I want you to wrap your head around this is that if you if I break my arm. Brooke, and we're best friends. You and I love each other. We have coffee every day. We're always talking. But if I break my arm, I'm going to the doctor to get my arm fixed because you are not the authority. You can't fix my arm, yeah? And what, what actually happens is if we're just always sharing about character and connection, we'll be friend-zoned. <laughs> It'll be like you're on a date and you want to progress the date further. You want to go out. You want to get engaged. No, no, you're, you're in the friend zone, yeah? You want to become the doctor to your ideal customer's broken arm. You need them to perceive you as the authority. And think of, think of content like your, like your shop front. Let, let's say that you sell wedding dresses to brides-to-be. When, so, so when somebody walks past your store, if, if, if somebody can't go into your social media feed and see in the last four or five posts very clearly what you do and how you can help somebody, it's literally the equivalent of you selling wedding dresses and you've got some work boots over there in the corner. You've got some supplements in the middle. You've got a couple of memes up the top and you've got one wedding dress in the back corner. People are going to be like, what? What is this? And they'll just move on. 
Yeah. You need to, like the bride to be comes in, wedding dresses everywhere. And you've got stories of how you've helped people find their wedding dress and they go, wow. And they want to stick around. Just making sense. Mm-hmm. So your social media feed right now, is it clearly showing that? And if it's not great, what an opportunity. What an opportunity. And if you can take on board what I've shared now, and if you've taken some notes with that, there is some very easy ways for you to go and create content. Yeah. A great post. Let's make this tangible. 10 things you didn't know about me. You can go and do that tomorrow. Yeah. Go feel free to search for me on Facebook and, and look, I've shared that before and you can use it as a template. 10 things you didn't know about me. Yeah. Pick something that's a little bit edgy and scary and vulnerable to talk about. Go and post about it. Yeah. Then find a testimonial, somebody you've helped, a customer that's got a great result. Talk about it. There's three pieces of content for you guys for the next week. Is that tangible? Are you going to do it? So let's say we get your shop front worked out. That's the first C. Then the second C is connections. Brooke, have you, have you ever heard, do you, do you find like oftentimes a big frustration is that people have, it's usually like the, the same people liking and commenting on their posts, mm-hmm. like friends yeah. and family and so forth. Do you hear that a lot? Yeah. Yeah. So you've got this, this gorgeous, you know, shop front, you've got wedding dresses all set up, but then it's only your friends and family, like supporting you, liking and commenting. What the hell? And it gets very frustrating, doesn't it? And you're like, how do I make this work? So your connections is where you're literally taking time. Like you would be blocking time in your calendar to go and find your target audience and where they hang out on Facebook. Let's use health and fitness as an example. Let's say that you help mums lose that last 20 kilos and and keep it off. Yeah. Where are those mums hanging out? What weight loss groups are they, are they spending time in? And then actually taking the time to connect with people. Yeah. Do not be anti-social on social media. When people are liking, commenting on their stuff, are you, are you connecting with them? Are you having a conversation with them? It's the equivalent of, you know, you've got a thousand people walking through the shopping center, how to go and find those people that are your target audience, tap them on the shoulder so they can then come up and look at your store. And then if if they come and look at your store and you're talking about solving their problem, what are they going to do? Yeah. Oh, wow. I'm going to stick around. Yeah. And this makes sense, doesn't it, Brooke? If somebody likes or comments on your post or engages with you, what's your natural instinct to go and do on that person's profile? You want to go do the same thing. I want to go check it out. Mm-hmm. And that's why I noticed how it's a, it's a flow in a system. If you've got good content and it's relevant to them, they're going to they're gonna stick around and then they're all there in your shop front, which then moves us to the third C, which is conversations. And this isn't, by the way, this isn't anything revolutionary. This is just marketing and sales 101. So then people are there, they're liking and they're commenting and engaging and you're going outside of that to, to have conversations. Then you want to interview your audience, get to know them, take an interest in them, uh, find out again, what are their biggest problems? What are they, what's keeping them up at night? What, what are they, what's their pain, you know, and especially weight loss, like how many people do we know that have, and that's in my old niche, right, that have tried 30 diets and that like there's so much guilt and so much shame and I can't do this and I don't deserve this and all of that stuff. So find out about that and then find out what they want to create. And then guess what? If your vehicle can help them, it would be a, a, a disservice, wouldn't it, Brooke? It'd be a disservice to not present what you have. Now, guess what? If, if you have a conversation, you might, there's three ways it could go. You might find a new friend, Brooke and I connected. I can't remember how, but we've had this connection and we're having this awesome podcast. No, number two, you might even refer them on to somebody else that can help them better. Like maybe they don't need help with, with, with weight loss, but they want to grow their business. So, uh, hey, you know what? I know Brooke. I, is it okay if I connect you with, with her? Leave them with some value. And then what are they, they're going to think about you and, and, and they're going to remember you. Or then number, number three is that they're a fit. You, you believe you can help them. So, hey, this is what we do. You know, if I could show you how to lose that 20 kilos and actually keep it off, like is that something you'd be interested in? What the hell do you think they're going to say? <laughs> hell yes right and so if you do if you do this well notice how as you're listening to this you're probably already freaking out i can't write content i don't know what to write what do i do here what do i do this is okay yeah that is okay it's all normal because what i'm sharing with you now is strategy and as we know who here has heard that it's 20 percent strategy 80 percent mindset when you get into doing this what's going to come up 
oh, you know, I don't, I don't know if I'm a good enough leader. Is anybody going to want to listen to me? You know, oh, you know, just I'm not like Brooke. You know, I don't have a cool shirt like Owen or a good beard like him. Like, you know, I'm not good. You know, he's had more experience and he's done this and that. Know all the stories that come up? Good. The only difference between somebody who succeeds and somebody who doesn't is the person that succeeds is, is they feel that discomfort and they move forward. Again, I'm, I'm proof of that, Brooke. You know, I don't know that much about the depth of yours, but we've all been through it. And the cool thing is you'll go through this, you'll grow through what you go through and, and, and you'll get really good at it. And just lastly, I just think I, in terms of giving you a bit of self-belief with this is that who he, is, who he knows how to drive a car? You know, most people do. And when you learn to drive a car, what was that experience like? Can you remember? If it's anything like me, your parents are like, ah, pull up and you're like, Tuk! and you're like pull, pulling forward and you're like, just stop and stop. And you're like, get out of the car. And you're yelling and screaming. And in that moment, you're like, I'm never going to be able to drive a car. It's impossible. But now how many of you can drive a car with your eyes closed, sending a text, <laughs> look in the rear vision mirror, foot on the accelerator, foot on the brake, listening to music, listen to a podcast right now like you probably do. Second nature. What if you just realised that it was supposed to be hard? And that if you did it for long enough, you would master business, posting, content, lives. Why is it any different than driving a car? It's, it's not, by the way. It's not. It's exactly the same. So what if your mentality was that it's supposed to be hard until it's not? And you just did it for long enough, right? So I think I'll leave, I, I want to leave it on that because I know that's always, I, I remember where when I was where you guys are at right now. Oh, I can't do it with this and all the stories. Guys, my role and my job is to help you divorce those limitations and limiting beliefs. Yeah. Why don't you divorce them and really marry the truth of your true potential? What would happen then? What would happen if you were to leave that shit behind and just say, this is possible? Not why won't it work, but what if it does? How would that feel? Wouldn't that be more exciting? Yeah. Anyway, that's, that's the three, that's the three C's. Feel free to check out me, check my stuff out on, on Facebook or Instagram and I go a little bit deeper, but I just, I'm most importantly, I think I hope that inspires you to know that success is structural not personal. And if it's not working, that's okay. Maybe you just don't yet quite have the, the appropriate marketing or sales structure um, for, for your business to get you there. And maybe you just need to ask a few more questions and, and get the support you need and, and away you go. Thank you so much for all of it. Like you just like dropped all these amazing things on my audience. So thank you so much for letting them know about all of your secrets and how to grow business and all of that. So I really appreciate it. You're welcome.